In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Lent is quickly drawing to a close. Easter is on the horizon. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries by acknowledging our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord, our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. dice el Señor, en que haré con la casa de Israel y la casa de Judá una alianza nueva. No será como la alianza que hice con los padres de ustedes, cuando los tomé de la mano para sacarlos de Egipto. Ellos rompieron su alianza y yo tuve que hacer un escaramiento con ellos. Esta será la alianza nueva que voy a hacer con la casa de Israel. Voy a poner mi ley en lo más profundo de su mente y voy a grabarla en sus corazones. Yo seré su Dios y ellos serán mi pueblo. Ya nadie tendrá que instruir a su prójimo ni a su hermano. Diciéndole, 
conoce al Señor para todos porque todos me van a conocer desde el más pequeño hasta el mayor de todos cuando yo les perdone sus culpas yo olvidé para siempre sus pecados palabra del Señor te alabamos Señor with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee and asked him sir we would like to see Jesus Philip went and told Andrew then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus Jesus answered them the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified amen amen I say to you Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, 
and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. The end of Lent draws near. The cross rises ominously on the horizon. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, when we will listen to the passion of the Lord. We, get, we begin our final preparation by listening to Jesus teaching in Jerusalem just before he dies. He tells us how he understands what is about to happen. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. This mystical understanding of the crucifixion is put into terms that even a day laborer on a farm can understand. His death will not be a loss. Within a grain of wheat lies the potential for a whole wheat plant. Only when the grain dies is the force released that gives birth to the new plant and ultimately to an abundance of seeds. Jesus' death on the cross will release him as a new spiritual force that will spread throughout the spiritual world. Jesus' death will release eternal life, an entirely new dimension of reality. Time will take on timelessness. In death, Jesus will become more, not less. People could not see or understand this during Jesus' life. They will begin to fully see him once he is lifted up on the cross. They will see that he is the connection between divinity and humanity. Having revealed this understanding of his death, Jesus then turns his attention to us, 
his disciples. This is the essential lesson that all disciples must learn. Those who identify with their individual life will lose it. Those who do not identify with their individual life will be transformed at death into eternal life. This is the path that the Holy Spirit leads us on. A path that allows God's love to manifest through our lives. We are drawn to the cross. As we draw near, we discover that we are never alone in our suffering and death. Jesus is right there with us through it all. The end of Lent draws near. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now with confidence let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, inspired by the sacrifice of the martyrs throughout the ages, may we continue to boldly preach the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord For leaders of nations, may they come together to end the production of weapons of mass destruction and craft a vision for world peace. We pray to the Lord. For those in prison due to political and religious beliefs, may their freedom be secured and their human rights be safeguarded. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are sick, especially those with the coronavirus, may they be restored to full health. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died, welcome them into your eternal kingdom with joy. We pray to the Lord. For our community, may any suffering we encounter serve to strengthen and perfect us in our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord in our hearts, O oh God, you have written a covenant of grace, sealed by the obedience of Jesus, your Son. Raise us up with Christ, the grain fallen to earth, that yields a harvest of everlasting life. Bring us to glorify your name by following faithfully where he has led. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the palabra Como sentinela ra, ra, ra. Mi alma te espera, Señor Desde el abismo clamo a ti, Señor Escucha mi clamor Estén atentos tu oídos, mi Dios A la suplicar mi voz Espera en ti, Señor Mi amo con tu palabra Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints of have you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. From him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to ask for the forgiveness of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And so we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Glass recycling is next weekend, March 27th and 28th in the church parking lot. You are invited to a Zoom discussion on climate action on Wednesday, March 24th at 6.30 p.m. Sign up information is in the bulletin and on the webpage. If you haven't updated your information for the parish directory or had a photo taken or sent one in, Please see the bulletin for further details. As a first careful step toward reopening, we are inviting those who are vaccinated to sign up for daily mass this coming week and next week. Sign up links are on the website and in the email bulletin. 
The Pastoral Council is working on a plan to expand to those with low risk, depending on what happens within the community. Thank you. So we've all struggled for a year not being able to have mass indoors. And so this is kind of a first tentative step back, doing what we can to make our church safe. Our numbers here in Pullman continue to be high, which makes it very difficult for us to move back indoors. So I'd like to thank everybody who has continues to make the effort for us to have mass outdoors. And I uh, thank you for your patience as we continue to try to move forward. The Lord be with you. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Save us, O Lord, carry us back. Rise your power.